Good morning. We're glad to have you with us. It is Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. I'm Shannon New. I'm Jason Laird already halfway through the work week. We it's are nice yeah. when you come back, you work a day and then we're all ready to Wednesday. We're all ready to Wednesday. I know That's I nice. walked in today and I was confused. Tracy was here, so we know what day, what day it, was. it was. Yep, yep, yeah. we did. That Tracy, was the reason Tracy why I knew it was Wednesday. Tracy doesn't come in on a Wednesday to clean, I don't know what I would do. I would just, I wouldn't Be very know where confused. I would. Yeah, very confused. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so weather seen today, a little bit cooler, not bad though. Uh, we're going to really start to ramp up over the next couple of days temperature wise though. So enjoy the slightly cooler weather while it lasts. U.S. Bank ICAM, beautiful sunrise. 39 degrees right now, some wind out of the northwest, but uh, nowhere near as much wind today as what we saw yesterday. As for your hour by hour forecast, partly sunny skies pretty much all day long. Opportunity Bank ICAM sitting at 50, a little bit of a breeze out of the west at 8 miles per hour. Hour by hour forecast starting out in the high 40s, 50s and 60s. Capital is going to stay pretty much on track with yesterday temperature wise. So forecast headlines, tiny, tiny bit cooler in some areas today. A lot less wind and then again, very warm as we head toward the weekend. So if you don't have weekend plans yet, it's going to be a nice one. Get out and enjoy it. We'll tell you more about that coming up very shortly, Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. We'll see you soon. Congress is shifting its focus for the next relief bill to small businesses. It's something that Democrats and Republicans seem to agree on. Legislators are hoping to help employers reopen shops and survive the rest of this coronavirus outbreak. Measures that would give small employers more time to get help for payroll and other costs is expected to pass the House this week. Congress remains split on other topics like how much money should be given to state and local governments for recovery efforts. Department of Labor leaders say they've issued over $300 million in unemployment payments since March, but not everyone is getting the benefits they've earned right away. Great Falls City bus driver Mark Statham was furloughed back in March. He just collected his first unemployment check last week. A filing error led to months of worry and frustration for him. He finally enlisted the help of Senator John Tester while he's, his case is now settled. Stratum worries others, other Montanans in dire situations aren't getting the benefits they've earned. He says people aren't able to reach a human when calling the Department of Labor or unemployment. The spokesperson there, Lauren Lewis, says in April their department received over 2 million calls compared to just 13,000 in February. Still, Statham says there needs to be improvements. You know, beef it up. Um, we're having an emergency here. You guys are working, your paychecks are coming in, but, but there's nothing I can do about going back to work except giving up my job and going and getting another one. And right now my only choice is to go back out over the road. And I just, I just won't do that. DLI says many Montanans are getting their benefits. In April, 78.7% of all Montanans who filed received their benefits within the month. We have more on this story on our website. Lewis and Clark Public Health will receive more than $200,000 through the Federal CARES Act to help cover its cost of responding to COVID-19. The state has allocated $5 million in emergency grants to public health organizations. Lewis and Clark County Health Officer Dendra Newman says her agency spent more than $108,000 on COVID-related expenses in March and April. She says 22 staff members have been working almost exclusively on the coronavirus with efforts like enforcing public health restrictions and doing contact tracing. County leaders say Lewis and Clark Public Health will play an important role going forward as they try to find safe ways to continue local services. It is very important that as we're maybe at this little bit of a lull, we should not uh, lull ourselves to sleep and not pay attention and realize that this COVID, uh, COVID pandemic is far from over uh, and that we need to make plans prospectively. Public tra and uh, that agency will, excuse me, public transportation is about to hit the road in the electric city. The Great Falls Transit District will open the bus doors on June 1st. The agency will require all passengers to wear a mask when using the bus. They'll also be doing regular deep cleaning of those buses. They're asking passengers to stay home if they have a fever or cough.
Montana has two new cases of coronavirus, bringing the total to 480. One of the cases is a female inmate at the Yellowstone County Detention Center in Billings. The other new case is in Bighorn County. The state has sustained its 17th COVID-related death. The victim is a woman in her 80s in Yellowstone County. That's that county's third death. There are 23 active cases in Montana right now. Three people are hospitalized. 440 people have recovered. State Attorney General Tim Fox asked the Montana Supreme Court to overturn a judge's ruling on the deadline for counting mailed absentee ballots next week. A state district judge in Billings ruled last Friday if a mailed primary election ballot is postmarked by Election Day, it must be counted. But Fox asked the Supreme Court to take control of the case and block the judge's order while deciding the issue. Fox is asking the high court to maintain the current rule, which says that mailed absentee ballots are counted only if they arrive at the county election offices by election day. Montana is in the midst of its first statewide election with all mail ballots. Voting in the primary election began on May 9th. It's continuing through next Tuesday, which is election day. The Supreme Court may accept the case and could also ask the state Democratic Party, which brought the lawsuit to respond. If it does, the high court is expected to fast track a ruling before election day. The Supreme Court has not yet issued a response. The Cascade County Sheriff's Office recently finished installing a new switchboard system to their jail facility. The old switchboards had been in use since 1997. The new system should be more reliable and will offer a variety of new features designed to keep both the inmates and employees at the detention center safe. The project cost $580,000 and involved multiple contacts acquired through city commission bids. Sheriff Jesse Slaughter says that the new technology will go a long way in making the day-to-day -day operations of the jail more efficient. They work um, all the time where our old ones weren't working properly. Uh, that's for starters. They also have more features. Uh, they have more safety features uh, for the officers, so the officers can't uh, sometimes accidentally uh, open doors when not intended. But then also there's also features to open all the doors in case of an emergency that weren't in the old ones. And Jesse Slaughter says that they will be... Uh the, the officers will continue to be watching those communication measures like isolating the cell doors and communicating with other officers. Well, we're learning more about the man who was attacked by a grizzly bear in Big Sky. According to Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, the man was mountain biking by himself on private property on a trail above Usul Falls when a bear attacked him after being surprised. FWP says they're not looking for the bear and they do not plan on euthanizing it at this point because the encounter was likely due to being surprised. The call was reported around 1 p.m., but the attack happened sometime before. The man suffered injuries to his face and back and was airlifted to Billings. As of Monday, the man, who is in his 60s, was in critical but stable condition. The Gallatin County Sheriff's Office is paying close attention to calls coming in on bear sightings in the area. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks says three orphaned bear cubs will be taken by an accredited facility in Arizona. Those cubs were orphaned last month after their mother was injured in a surprise encounter with a hiker along the Rocky Mountain front. After VP had to euthanize the sow, the cubs were captured and taken to Montana Wild in Helena. While FWP and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service could search for a facility to care for them. Well, it is Wednesday morning. Time now is 5.08. Coming up on Montana this morning, get your bets in. Sports betting is back. We'll have an update on that coming up next. And later in your weather forecast, a little bit cooler today, but not too bad. A couple of clouds and light showers along the high line here bright and early this morning. Overall, a little bit cloudy, kind of a little bit of sun here and there, and a stray shower or two not out of the question throughout central Montana, but overall, pretty mellow day on tap. We'll break down that forecast shortly. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. It's 511 here on your Wednesday morning live look over the capital city where we're sitting at 50 degrees to start our day. Like many things across the United States, sports bets are beginning to see a resurgence, and with that comes the betting machines. The Sport Bet Kiosk Montana, uh, Sports Bet Montana rather, opened their kiosks all across the state shortly before COVID-19. Now sports are beginning to return. Jennifer McKee, communications manager for the Montana Lottery, says the sport with the most this number of bettors up to this point is mixed martial arts with over $30,000 wagered. And sports like Korean baseball and golf are also seeing action as well.
Bobcat football can return to the practice field soon. MTN's John Miller talked to the tight ends coach Nate Potter this on Tuesday afternoon about this upcoming season. Last week it was announced that the Bobcat student athletes could return to athletic facilities on June 1st. The Bobcats offense has some catching up to do on implementing new coordinator Justin Udy's offense. The most obvious thing is we didn't get those spring reps. So we just got to overcome that right now mentally by installing those new parts of the offense and getting those mental reps and making sure the guys understand it inside and out and then wasting no time when we do get to practice. For the tight ends group, they've been preparing for life as normal no matter what happens this season. We're controlling what we can right now. I'm staying optimistic personally. For Potter, he has a luxury. Ten tight ends are on the MSU roster. I know it's not normal, but the, our brand of football requires you know, full back body types, multiple tight ends. In order for us to be successful and do what we want to do, we got to be able to utilize all, all 10 guys. A former Arizona Cardinals offensive tackle, he has plenty of knowledge to offer his players. It's just a mentality. It's a mindset. It's that mindset that you're going to be the more physical blocker and you're going to win your one-on-one -on -one matchup. Potter is glad he doesn't have to teach them how to prepare for players he faced in the NFL, like future Hall of Famer Julius Peppers. But he has been helping one Bobcat who might be blocking guys like that in the future. Former defensive end Bryce Sterk, who is transitioning to tight end with the Dolphins. We are going to be kind of going back and forth, and I'm going to give him as much input as I have. I'm a big fan of his, man. I, I know he's going to do big things, so I'm fired up for him. In Bozeman, John Miller, MTN Sports. Well, up next to your weather forecast, we are tracking another warm one, a little bit cooler than yesterday. Yesterday we hit 73 degrees in Great Falls. Normal would be about 67. Today's sunrise right at 536, sunset at about 911 p.m. Yesterday in the capital, 74 was the magic number. Today we're going to be almost a carbon copy of that, partly sunny skies. Sunrise in the capital at 541 and about 910 for your sunset. Forecast is after the break. Now. Here's your storm tracker weather forecast with Jason Laird. Good morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Hopefully your day's off to a great start. We're a tiny bit cooler this morning than what we were 24 hours ago, and some locations are going to stay a tiny bit cooler today. Quite a bit of a temperature spread, though, between the capital and Great Falls at 39. A couple of light little showers trying to make their way through the high line here bright and early this morning, but overall pretty minimal in the terms of moisture today. We will see partly cloudy skies throughout central Montana. A few of those may kick off a stray shower or two around the noon hour or early this afternoon, but very minimal impacts. You'll have a little bit better chance of showers into central Montana as some of those uh, clouds kind of impact the mountains and rise up a little bit. 69 for the daytime high today. The capital actually a skosh warmer than yesterday. 75 degrees and looking at the 60s and 70s throughout northeastern Montana. Pretty average for your overnight lows. Looking at 43 in Great Falls, 46 in the capital. Mid 40s continuing into northeastern Montana as well. Tomorrow we're going to continue to bump those temperatures up a couple of notches. 72 right on track with room temperature for Great Falls. 76 in the capital pushing the 80s west of the divide, a little bit cooler in northeastern Montana, but that warmer air is going to continue to take over, and here's how all of that's going to play out. Big high pressure ridge is going to move in on Thursday into Friday. That's going to keep us mostly dry. Now, Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, there will be a slight possibility of a couple little afternoon showers and thunderstorms. You see those little speckles of green, but for the most part, we're looking at high pressure dominating our forecast as we head to the weekend, pushing temperatures well into the 80s. It'll break down a little bit Sunday, Monday, but we're still going to stay in the 80s, maybe a couple of high 70s. However, we are kind of keeping an eye on a possible weather maker there off of the coast that could be knocking on our doorstep maybe Tuesday of this next week. Here's how all of that translates over the next seven days for us. Partly cloudy skies and warming temperatures, especially as we head toward Friday, 81 degrees. Again, a couple pop Possible showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon, both Friday, Saturday. Little bit better chance of moisture, though, by Tuesday of this next week. Next seven days in the capital, 75 today, slowly but surely warming up as we head toward the weekend. A couple little isolated showers and thunderstorms as we head toward the weekend. Not too bad there and staying very, very warm and mild as we head into next week. Shannon.
All right, Jason, thank you. Time now is 519 Wall Street rallied to start the holiday shortened week. The Dow soared 529 points. The Nasdaq gained 15. The S&P 500 added 36. Brokers were back on the trading floor for the first time in two months. They had to go through temperature checks, wear masks once inside, and maintain social distancing. Reopening the country's economy has helped push stocks to the highest level since the coronavirus started to take hold. Well, coming up here on your Wednesday morning, a historic day in the new space race. We'll take you to the Kennedy Space Center ahead of a major launch today. That's next. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. It's 522 on your Wednesday morning and later today, get this NASA astronauts are set to blast off from the United States for the first time in nearly a decade. Elon Musk SpaceX is at the controls with the Falcon 9 rocket set to launch. CBS's Skylar Henry is at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida covering this historic day. With just hours to go, a decade's worth of work will be put to the test, turning a new chapter in America's storied space program. NASA and SpaceX are ready to launch. This is a unique moment where all of America can take a, a moment and look at our country do something stunning again. And that is launch American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. Longtime astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin will take Elon Musk's Crew Dragon spacecraft on a mission to the International Space Station. I'm a big believer in the commercialization of space. We need it to be successful. It's how we're going to get to the moon and on to Mars. It's the first time a private company is sending astronauts into orbit with the help of NASA and a multi-billion dollar investment from taxpayers. Almost everything is controlled by, by touch and screen. That's even how you fly it. There's no stick. You know, there's no like giant wheel or stick to, to fly. You, you, you fly by touching the touchscreen like you're playing a video game. Former NASA astronaut Garrett Reisman has guided SpaceX through the journey from ambitious idea to actual spacecraft on a launch pad. In a way, you guys are the torchbearers almost in terms of a, a new type of business model and potentially a space travel model. Yeah, so that's the really exciting thing about this. Now, the first and foremost, what's happening this week is a successful launch will we'll be NASA and the United States getting back into the business of sending humans up to the space station. A successful mission puts NASA on track to become less reliant on Russian spacecraft, which has been the case since the last American shuttle landed in 2011. Skyler Henry, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. President Trump's expected to be there this afternoon. Of course, weather is a big factor yeah. in the potential for the launch today. So if it isn't just quite right, they're going to scrap it for today and move the mission to Saturday, possibly. Gotcha. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's very critical. I mean, you throw like one little element into the mix and it messes everything up. But Which is crazy to think about because right. we're sending this into space. Like this <laughs> thing is loaded, ready for all yeah. kinds of things. But weather has to be just right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it has to get through the lower portions of the atmosphere. But I will yeah. say like one of the coolest things I ever did was uh, the You went space. to space? Yeah, yeah. I wish. <laughs> no, the, uh, they have a space symposium down in Colorado oh, Springs. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of Elon Musk's first, oh, God, it was like one of the lower level orbiting planes. Uh -huh. So it was like a plane, but it kind of looked like a spaceship, sat in it. <gasps> Ooh. Aren't you fancy? Check that off the list. <laughs> so fancy. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Do you have to but... <laughs> no, shell out no. a lot for that? <laughs> well, I worked in TV down there, so, yeah. you know, it's amazing. He's like, hey, uh, can I get a picture in this thing? Yeah. Nice. No, it's super cool, though, to see that, and it's amazing, all the technology and whatnot. But uh, not a bad start today. A couple light showers tracking throughout north central Montana, bright and early. Car wash forecast, pretty much great. There is a slight, slight chance of afternoon showers. So, in other words, if I go through the car wash, <laughs> I know exactly what's going to happen. One of those yep. stray showers is going to find me. And dump. And just enough, well, <laughs> probably won't even dump, just enough to get the, the little speckles uh -huh. on there. Really Tea catch all the little dirt. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Tea time <laughs> forecast today looking good. A lot less wind today on tap. However, the capital maybe a little bit breezier this afternoon, but overall, nice couple of days here. So 69 today and check it out back into the 80s as wow. Friday rolls around. I'm not going to be. I'm just kidding. I'll be here <laughs> 75 today and then uh, continuing to warm up as we head toward Friday as well. You have to take me with you if you're just disappearing. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, wine values are holding steady through this outbreak and coronavirus infections have reportedly surged in the American meat industry as strain producers try to get back on their feet. Jane King is in New York with those stories and more in today's Egg and Energy Report. 
Coronavirus infections are still a problem at meatpacking plants. The number of COVID-19 cases linked to meat processing giants Tyson, Smithfield, and JBS has nearly quadrupled over the past month from 3,000 to about 11,000. Now, that's according to analysis done in the Washington Post. Now, the virus had killed at least 64 workers across the industry as of yesterday, as according to the Midwest Center for Investigative Reporting. Wine value is holding steady, much better than the stock market. The Wine Market Journal's index of the top most important wines in the world show it's about the same as it was late last year. Another standout trend is wines from Italy and Port, fortified wine from Portugal, are rising in popularity. While the USDA says 88% of the U.S. corn crop is planted below expectations, USDA rates the nation's soybean planting completion rate at 65% versus 55% five-year average, but that was below the trade expectations of 70%. Apple's new Mac notebook update improves the life of the battery. The biggest change in the Mac OS 10.15.5 10.15.5 is a new battery health management feature. So the goal of this change is to reduce the chemical aging of the MacBook's battery and extend its lifespan, but without compromising battery life. From New York, I'm Jane King with your Ag and Energy Report. Coming up this half hour on Montana this morning, waiting for help. We'll hear from one Great Falls man about his struggle to get unemployment payments during coronavirus. Plus, we're getting a look at a new system being used inside the Cascade County Jail. And a historic day in the new space race. We'll take you to the Kennedy Space Center ahead of a major launch today. Montana This Morning starts now. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Good morning, too. We're so glad to have you with us on this Wednesday morning. I'm Shannon Newt. And I'm Jason Laird, already halfway through the work week. Yeah. That's always a huge plus and kind of <laughs> nice coming off of a longer weekend. It as is well. nice. Yeah, mentally, it's just like, okay. Yeah, I'm a little yeah. tired, though. I had, you know, yesterday mm-hmm. was kind of that adjustment. Granted, it's not like, you know, we were up crazy late or anything, but there's always that adjustment. And yeah. When you throw an extra day into the mix, trying to get up at, you know, 1 a.m., that's when we that's get up. when the alarm goes 2 off. 2 a.m. Yes. is when we <laughs> set foot in the station here, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit of an adjustment, but we're, we're here. We're, we're cooking. here. We're ready. Yeah, yeah. trying to be awake. Cup of coffee, mm-hmm. raring to go. Right. Well, you uh, did. Yeah, I did have a little extra this morning. <laughs> uh, you know what I did this morning? Did you spill it? Uh, no, I didn't spill it, but I pulled <laughs> the, the forgot to put the coffee cup under the Keurig. Oh, again, again, that happened. I've often. had a real bad streak with that. I've never <laughs> done it. Well, I lie. I've only done that like once in my life until the last couple weeks, and it's been a <laughs> once a week ongoing occurrence. saga <laughs> of uh, forgetting to put the mug under the Keurig. It's quite the uh, it's a struggle. See what you have to look you forward need, to. You need coffee <laughs> so you can make coffee. Be able to not wake it up. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I just have one ready, ready. I'm not even talking about. Hopefully everybody's <laughs> paying attention to what's going on on the screen here. <laughs> Failing at my job here miserably this morning. OK, a little bit cooler today. Less wind, maybe a shower or two. Much warmer this weekend. Tell you all about your extended forecast coming up very shortly, Shannon. And maybe some more stories about maybe Jason and his stories. coffee experience. All right, thank you. Time now is 531 on your Wednesday. Department of Labor, Labor leaders say they've issued over $300 million in unemployment payments since March, but not everyone is getting the benefits they've earned right away. Great Falls City bus driver Mark State has been furloughed since March. He just collected his first unemployment check last week. A filing error led to months of worry and frustration for him. He finally enlisted the help of Senator John Tester. While his case is settled, Statham worries other Montanans in dire situations are not getting the benefits they've earned. He says people aren't able to reach a human when calling the Department of Labor or unemployment. DLI spokesperson Lauren Lewis says in April, their department received more than 2 million calls. That's compared to just 13,000 in February. Still, Statham says there needs to be improvements. You know, beef it up. Um, We're having an emergency here. You guys are working, your paychecks are coming in, but, but there's nothing I can do about going back to work except giving up my job and going and getting another one. And right now my only choice is to go back out over the road. And I just, I just won't do that. DLI says many Montanans are getting their benefits. In April, 78.7% of all Montanans who filed received their benefits within the month. We have more on this story on our website. 
Public transportation is about to hit the road in the Electric City. The Great Falls Transit District will open the bus doors on June 1st. The agency will require all passengers to wear a mask when using the bus. They will also be doing regular deep cleaning of the buses. They're asking passengers to stay home if they have a fever or a cough. The Cascade County Sheriff's Office recently finished installing a new switchboard system in their jail facility. MTN's Matt Holzaffel took a tour of the jail and shows us what's new. Under construction since February, the new switchboard system at the Cascade County Detention Center is finally complete. Well, they're just basically far more reliable. They work all the time where our old ones weren't working properly. The old switchboards, in use since 1997. Sheriff Jesse Slaughter says it was time for a change. They have more safety features for the officers. There's identification pieces to this as well where they can identify who's in what cells. Um, there's there's so many features I, I can't even begin to describe to you that all the different ways that it's going to help better our facility and make it more efficient. All this as part of a plan to keep the building ready to handle any task thrown its way. A building like this is gets a lot of wear and tear on it and you have to have a robust capital improvement plan to make sure you're keeping up with day-to-day -day maintenance. The project cost $580,000 and involved multiple contracts acquired through city commission bids. A price tag that Sheriff Slaughter says was worth it. Absolutely, it's expensive. Um, there's there's nothing inside this facility that isn't. Uh, that's the reality of it. But we feel that this is uh, an important step to not only protect our staff, but also the inmates. In Great Falls, Matt Holzaffel, MTN News. The new system also allows detention facility workers to have more control over security measures like isolating cell doors and communicating with others. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks says three orphaned bear cubs will be taken by an accredited facility in Arizona. Those cubs were orphaned last month after their mother was injured in a surprise encounter with a hiker along the Rocky Mountain front. FWP had to euthanize the sow. The cubs were captured and taken to Montana Wild in Helena. While FWP and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service could search for a facility to care for them. It's 535 now on your Wednesday. Coming up on Montana This Morning, Big Sky Inspiration. Turning this time of coronavirus into creativity. That story new this morning is next. And later in your weather forecast, although a little tiny bit cooler today compared to yesterday, the big talking point, high pressure is going to dominate our forecast. That's going to clear skies and allow for temperatures to climb to the 80s as we near the weekend. We'll take a closer look at your extended forecast coming up very shortly. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. You're looking live over a beautiful start to our day here in Great Falls. It is now 538 on your Wednesday morning. Well, if COVID-19 didn't give you enough inspiration to go out and enjoy the outdoors this summer, perhaps a trip to an art exhibit in Fairfield will. MTN's Isaiah Dunk has our story. At three years old, Bonnie Dale watched her mother painting pink roses on Valentine's for local teachers. She's been inspired to be an artist ever since. I found a box of crayons. We always had something like that around and I decided I was going to decorate the wall. That was my first experience at painting, <laughs> painting mother's wall. Dale grew up in a family with 17 children on a ranch near the Sun River. Her father was a game warden, instilling her with a love of animals. Dale added sculpting to her skill set in middle school and eventually embarked on an art career over four decades. Living on the ranch like that and being around mom and dad both, they loved animals. I grew up loving them. And now for the first time in years, a large amount of her work is on display at the Big Sky Pottery and Art Gallery in Fairfield. Gallery owner Andy Watson said it's been a joy to watch his gallery come to life with Dale's art. More often than not, she gave her pieces away. Most of what's on display is on loan from local owners, but some simply couldn't give up their pieces. When you have something of uh, a Bonnie Dale, it's, it's, it bespeaks of the love of nature that only somebody who grew up and spent every day of her childhood, where, where your formative years are, could start breathing that in and it becomes a part of their system. But there's one piece on display near and dear to Dale that she could never part with. It's one of her mom's favorite spots on the Sun River. I love my mother. She was my best friend. And 
we sit there on the bank and visited. That was our last, just one-on-one -on -one visit together. And I painted that thinking of Mom and put the roses where we sat. In Fairfield, Isaiah Dunk, MTN News. Dale's exhibit was scheduled to end on May 31st, but Watson said he plans on extending it to June 15th. Well, NASA astronauts are getting ready for a historic space launch later today. After concerns about whether the SpaceX Dragon capsule will go into orbit as planned. It'll be the first astronaut launch from American soil in nearly a decade and the first in an entirely new shuttle since 1981. Astronauts will be heading to the International Space Station for a test flight from Florida. If the weather does get in the way today, it'll be rescheduled for Saturday. Well, Weather-wise here in the Big Sky State, we're shaping up to be very, very nice. A little tiny bit cooler today, but a lot less wind. We're sitting at 39 in Great Falls. Clear and 50 right now in the capital, pushing the 50s in northeastern Montana. If you did want to run the car through the car wash, pretty good. Maybe a scattered shower or two, which we'll kind of show you a little bit later in the show here. As for your pollen forecast, so far not bad. Still trending medium up uh, for the first half of the weekend here. More on your forecast is coming up next. Now, here's your storm tracker weather forecast with Jason Laird. Good morning, friends. Proud to have you along for the ride here. Uh, a little bit cooler this morning compared to where we were yesterday, but still not bad. Overall, we're going to be right on track with average, if not just above. Currently sitting at 39 degrees in Great Falls, 50 in the capital. Light showers moving throughout central and north central Montana. Those are going to kind of taper off. We'll still see a little bit of lingering moisture in central Montana, but very spotty, isolated showers, maybe around the noon hour early this afternoon. Just enough to put, you know, a couple little speckles on a freshly washed car and uh, overall, pretty minimal in the terms of moisture, though, throughout central Montana. 69 degrees for your daytime high in Great Falls, 75 in the capital, low 70s and high 60s in northeastern Montana. And we're going to continue on that warming trend over the next couple of days. Pretty average for overnight lows this evening, about 43 in Great Falls, 46 in the capital, mid 40s in northeastern Montana. As for tomorrow, we're going to continue to bump those temperatures up a couple of notches. Very warm west of the divide, starting to see the 70s again here in central. Montana and those uh, warmer temperatures are going to continue to kind of flood in over the next few days. Reason behind that huge ridge of high pressure is going to start building. So really, especially on Thursday is when we're going to feel the warmer air start to move in might still be a little bit breezy at times as that high pressure ridge builds in. But by Friday, we're going to see temperatures back in the 80s, believe it or not, all across the state. So finally starting to feel a little bit more summer like Friday afternoon. Little chance of maybe some uh, isolated showers and thunderstorms, very minimal chances and anything that does kick off is going to be very sporadic, very isolated. Same story Saturday afternoon on Sunday, a little bit of moisture will likely spill into western Montana, but we should stay very, very calm and mild throughout central Montana, all thanks to that high pressure ridge and that ridge might break down a little bit Monday night into Tuesday of next week, potentially opening up the door for a few showers. So with that said, isolated showers not out of the question today but for the most part, very, very mild, 69 degrees, 72 tomorrow, continuing that warming trend well through the weekend. Again, that ridge is expected to maybe break down Monday into Tuesday, opening up the door for a couple of storms by Tuesday and next week in the capital today. Mid 70s will continue to warm up nicely up through the weekend, well into the mid 80s. That's going to take us through Sunday into the first part of next week before a couple of showers and thunderstorms potentially start knocking at our doorstep on Tuesday, Shannon. I-46 still to come on Montana this morning, gambling for game show glory, where you can watch a Great Falls woman go after a big win. But first, here's another edition of Congrats to Grads. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. 
Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on your Wednesday morning. It is 549. A Great Falls native will make her national TV debut on Monday. Yeah, Tom Wiley tells us where you can watch. Shauna Applegate is a family practitioner at Alluvian Health in Great Falls, and at work, she's all business. But if you turn on the TV Monday morning, you might see a different side of the healthcare provider. The green pea right here. Is it Shauna? Come on, Shauna. Last year, Applegate and her grandma Cheryl took a trip to the West Coast where part of the adventure was attending and being a contestant on the long-running game show Let's Make a Deal. So we um, made our costumes on the way, like as we were driving and traveling, which was very interesting. We were two peas in a pod, you know, kind of true to life. The day it was, we were there from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m and taping an hour and a half, so it was a long day. And Applegate can't disclose the results of the show, but she can tell you her time on camera is worth watching. Go! <laughs> you know, you never think you're gonna get picked on one of these things, so I wasn't really completely paying attention when they were like, this is the way you run, this is what you do, and yeah, I, Probably did some things that were not called for, ran the wrong way, wig falling off, it was, it was a blast. Appearing on national TV was certainly a highlight, but it wasn't the purpose of the trip. So my grandma was going through um, cancer treatment for lung cancer and uh, she wanted to go to the Grand Canyon, so I decided let's make a big thing out of this. So we flew to Arizona, drove from the, to the Grand Canyon, over to Hollywood went to a day of let's make a deal, and then we drove to Vegas and flew home. An adventure worth remembering, whether she wins or not. It's a new Audi A3. It was so much fun. Tom Wiley, MTN News. So Shauna's grandmother did undergo successful chemotherapy back in 20, 2019 and is looking forward to her next trip. So her appearance, if you want to see the rest of that, is yeah. next Monday, this coming Monday. Let's make a deal. It airs right here on CBS at 10 a.m. I feel like that's one of those situations where you always like play it through in your head. You're like, okay, I'm in the audience. I'm going to mm -hmm. do this. I'm not going to yes. do this. And then it happens and you're just all out the door, blank. like just yeah. blank. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you just there are a lot of game revert. like quiz type game shows jeopardy. I've you know, like, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Like those that I watch, I'm like, oh, I got this. Not so much. <laughs> oh, no, a totally different I'll, scenario I'll, uh, there. I'll pull up our or her Jeopardy stats on Alexa one of these days. No, they're not good. No, they're <laughs> awful. They're <laughs> absolutely <laughs> awful, which partly is my fault it. because I'll just yell out random. Yeah, you mess it up. You mess but, with Alexa. Uh, anyway, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my Alexa's getting smart, though. She's well, very intelligent. Seriously, she's like, learning you. Yeah, I know it's kind of disturbing. I wonder if the... anyone with their TV on right oh, now. Oh gosh, there's probably people saying, out Alexa, there. Alexa, 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 you're welcome. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's people <laughs> out there like no, stop, not today. stop it, don't do it. <laughs> Showers across the High Line here this morning. Plenty of sunshine to go around. A little bit cloudy at times today. Gardening forecast looking good. Uh, weather conditions very, very mild. Could see a couple little afternoon showers. Not out of the question today, but the best chance is going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And even what moves through there is going to be pretty darn minimal. So I'd still just plan on firing up the uh, sprinklers or taking out the garden hose here. Uh, 69 today going to be warming up as we head toward Friday. 81 degrees finally back wow. to the 80s there. In the capital, 75 degrees today back up to the mid 80s as Friday rolls around. And the nice, warm, mild weather is going to take us through the weekend. All right, good news there. Stay with us. Your Farm and Ranch Report with the Montana Ag Network is next. Coming up this half hour on Montana This Morning, waiting for help. We'll hear from one Great Falls man about his struggle to get unemployment payments during coronavirus. Plus, we're getting a look at a new system being used inside the Cascade County Jail. And later... NASA and SpaceX are ready to launch. I'm Skyler Henry at the Kennedy Space Center with a look at the historic mission in a new space race. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Good morning. We're glad to have you with us. It is Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. And just saying that, I'm like, whoa. I know. Whoa. Crazy to <laughs> what think. Happened well, to yeah, May? what happened to the year so far mm -hmm. and what happened to the week even? It's we were already Wednesday. Just having this conversation about how it was already were May. We? Yes, and you yes we, were. we lose track of time. Well, I think it's with coronavirus corona and all craziness, of that. you know, yes. messes with mm -hmm. everybody's schedule. And, oh, 100%. Yeah, but and I, I was like, know. holy cow. 
almost June. I know it's crazy to wow. think about. Also, we were just in snow this weekend, so I think that doesn't yeah. help my brain. <laughs> that like, really realize throw, that. Yeah. that throws everything for a <laughs> loop. Yeah, I was kind of hoping we're out of that. Now, the good news is here in our area, it's going to start feeling more June like as we play out the week. Beautiful sunrise across the board. Still some cl clouds off in the clouds. 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 <laughs> Clouds off in the horizon there. Uh, a couple of showers, not out of the question, but very, very minimal impacts. Hour by hour forecast well into the 50s and 60s. As for the capital, we're also going to be looking at uh, yeah, 50s warming up to the 60s here this morning. So very, very mild there. As for current temperatures in the capital right now, we are looking at uh, Opportunity Bank I Camp 48 degrees at the airport Lincoln and about 36 44 in Clancy. As we take a look at your forecast headlines here across the board, a little bit cooler today, less wind today, so good news there. However, a little bit breezier in the capital and a very warm and mild weekend on tap. I'll tell you all about it coming up very shortly, Shannon. All right, Jason, thanks. Time now is 601. Montana has two new cases of coronavirus. That brings the total to 480. One of the cases is a woman inmate at the Yellowstone County Detention Center in Billings. The other new case is in Bighorn County. The state also has its 17th COVID related death. That victim is a woman in her 80s in Yellowstone County. It's that county's third death. There are 23 active cases in Montana. Three people are hospitalized. Overall, 440 people have recovered. Cascade County Judge Greg Pinsky ruled that hundreds of animals will not be returned to a Great Falls woman at an animal cruelty hearing on Tuesday. Pamela Jo Polieski faces charges including aggravated animal cruelty, a felony. Cascade County deputies seized over 170 animals from her property after a fire on May 6th. The animals are being taken care of by the county at undisclosed locations. Penske also required Polieski to post a bond for one month's care of the animals, roughly $31,000. If she doesn't pay by June 1st, she'll forfeit the animals to the county. John uh, Racky, the county attorney, had also previously told MTN that animals could become adoptable pending results of this hearing. We'll continue to keep you updated on this case as we learn more. Broadwater County Commissioner Laura Obert has been charged with felony theft and official misconduct, a misdemeanor. That theft charge stems from an incident dating back to 2015, where Obert allegedly told Broadwater County payroll to give her additional hourly pay over her salary pay as a commissioner. Court records say that additional pay above her salary totaled nearly $8,900. Orbit is also accused of not properly disclosing conflicts of interest when voting on matters where the Montana Business Assistance Connection was involved. Her husband, Brian, is the executive director. Court documents say Obert entered a deferred prosecution agreement in 2016, repaid the money, and agreed to disclose any further conflicts of interest as a commissioner. Obert is alleged to have breached the terms of that agreement by not disclosing her ties with MBAC on, Mar on six separate occasions. Obert's lawyer, Brian Gallick, told MTN his client is not guilty of the charges and is looking forward to her day in court. She's scheduled to make her first appearance on June 5th. State Attorney General Tim Fox asked the Montana Supreme Court to overturn a judge's ruling on the deadline for counting mailed absentee ballots next week. A state district judge in Billings ruled last Friday if a mailed primary election ballot is postmarked by Election Day, it must be counted. But Fox asked the Supreme Court to take control of the case and block the judge's order while deciding the issue. Fox is asking the high court to maintain the current rule, which says that mailed absentee ballots are counted only if they arrive at county election offices by election day. Montana is in the midst of its first statewide election with all mail in ballots voting in the primary election began back on May 9th. It continues through next Tuesday, election day. The Supreme Court may accept the case and could also ask the state Democratic Party, which brought the lawsuit to respond. If it does, the high court is expected to fast track a ruling before election day. The Supreme Court has not yet issued a response. The Cascade County Sheriff's Office re recently finished installing a new switchboard system in their jail facility. The old switchboards had been in use since 1997. The new system should be more reliable and will offer a variety of new features designed to keep both the inmates and employees at the detention center safe. The project cost $580,000 and involved multiple contracts acquired through city commission bids. Sheriff Jesse Slaughter says that the new technology will go a long way in making the day-to-day -day operations of the jail more efficient. They work um, 
all the time where our old ones weren't working properly. Uh, that's for starters. They also have more features. Uh, they have more safety features uh, for the officers, so the officers can't uh, sometimes accidentally uh, open doors when not intended, but then also there's also features to open all the doors in case of an emergency that weren't in the old ones. The new system also allows detention facility workers to have more control over security measures like isolating cell doors and communicating with other officers. Lewis and Clark County is asking for nearly $300,000 to help pay for a stream restoration project south of Helena. County commissioners voted to move forward with applying for a state grant for the Grizzly Gulch Reclamation Project. In the project area, decades of placer mining have disrupted the natural flow of Grizzly Creek. Leaders want to rebuild the natural channel and floodplain, improve water quality and habitat, and protect safety on Grizzly Gulch Drive. Working with what's available, and that proved to be the most economical uh, project. So mainly just moving material around, establishing that um, natural slope the best we can, a few culvert insulations, some guardrail and trail. The grant application will have to go before the Montana legislature next year. Lawmakers will decide whether to approve the funding. If the county gets the grant, work could start in 2022. It is Wednesday morning. Time now is 6.06. .06. Coming up on Montana this morning, she may not be a household name, but it's likely that you've seen her often. Meet the sign language interpreter who helps keep the deaf and hard of hearing community informed. And later in your weather forecast, a beautiful week to hit up the lake or a creek or stream, whatever you want to call it. Looking at the high 60s today, very little wind, slightest possibility of a couple of showers overall, though next couple of days looking good. More on your forecast is coming up. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on this Wednesday morning. Time now is 6.09 as we take a live look this morning over the capital city. Sun's starting to come up for a beautiful Wednesday ahead. Well, when it comes to getting information about the coronavirus, most people can turn on the TV to possibly listen to a press conference. But for the deaf and hard of hearing in the Treasure State, there are some additional barriers. MTN's Evelyn Schultz introduces us to a woman you've likely seen signing on your screen since she's passionate about equal access for all. At her request, we included a video of her interpreting in this story. Every step that we take be For two on. months, Vicki Gregori has uh, stood next to Governor Steve Bullock mobile, at press conferences. I was really glad to be home and around and available for it. She must quickly translate the governor's words into American Sign Language. I love ASL. I love being an interpreter. It's amazing. While closed captioning is an option for some, it's not always accurate. Plus, reading English quickly can be a challenge for someone whose primary language is ASL. Masks are more common in these changing times, but Gregory can't wear one when she's interpreting. That's because some people read lips. Plus, she uses facial expressions to convey tone and urgency. ASL is its own language with its own syntax, all of those things. It's a visual, conceptual language. COVID-19 has forced interpreters to adapt to new vocabulary with signs for words like coronavirus and quarantine. There's a, a lovely network of interpreters around the country that discuss this stuff. Gregory learned ASL as a teen. It became a career. And now, despite the current challenges, she says helping others get equal access to information is still rewarding. Every time I make a mistake, which is every time, uh, you go home and you think, I'm old enough, I don't need this anymore, I'm gonna retire, but why would I? I still love it, uh, it still makes me money, and uh, I'm still doing a service. Reporting in Helena, Evelyn Schultz, yeah. MTN News. 
And according to the Montana Association of the Deaf, Montana was one of the last states in the country to have an interpreter at the coronavirus press conferences. Members of that group advocated for that addition. Gregory says she hopes requiring an interpreter becomes commonplace. Well, we want to wish congratulations to the 2020 senior class at Hart Butte High School. 16 students earned their diplomas during a ceremony earlier this week, complete with social distancing measures. The class used many traditional decorations for the ceremony and held it outdoors on the football field. The school superintendent said after an unusual academic year, they wanted to honor the students with something special. Up next to your weather forecast, we are tracking slightly cooler temperatures in north central Montana than yesterday, but overall a nice warming trend as we head toward the weekend. Couple light showers along the High Line, not much actually falling though. Plenty of sunshine in central Montana, 39 in Great Falls, 48 in the capital. Hour by hour forecast, we're going to be getting into the 60s and 70s again here in a lot of locations. Early 50s in the capital and 70s this afternoon. Complete with your forecast is after the break. Now, here's your storm tracker weather forecast with Jason Laird. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully your Wednesday is off to a great start. Beautiful sunrise out there if you're just now waking up and peeking outside. Little tiny bit cooler this morning compared to where we were 24 hours ago. And those cooler temperatures are going to kind of stick with us throughout north central Montana. However, the further south you go, pretty on track with average, if not a little bit above in some locations. A couple little weak little showers trying to make their way throughout north central Montana at this hour. 39 degrees in Great Falls, 48 in the capital, already hitting the 50s throughout the eastern plains. Today, we're going to stay partly cloudy, which is going to kind of hold back those temperatures a little tiny bit. Can't rule out a stray shower, and I mean stray. Uh, most areas are going to stay bone dry today. It'll be just enough. If anything, you pull the car out of the car wash and get a couple speckles on the hood, that sort of thing. But for the most part, relatively dry conditions today and then clearing up overnight. We'll see daytime highs at about 69 degrees in Great Falls, 75 in the capital, looking at the low 60s and uh, or excuse me, high 60s, low 70s in northeastern Montana. Haze a little bit cooler today at 63. As for overnight lows, pretty on track with average, maybe a little bit chillier, especially in north central Montana, looking at uh, about 42 degrees is the magic number there. 43 in the cap. Uh, Great Falls and 46 in the capital here this evening. Then tomorrow we're going to start the warming trend, warming up to right on track with room temperature in Great Falls, 76 in the capital and looking at the low 70s in northeastern Montana. And here's the driving force behind that warmer weather. Huge high pressure ridge is going to build in. That's going to clear skies and allow for temperatures to climb up to the 80s as we head toward Friday. Now Friday afternoon, you know, this little speckle of green there will have just enough daytime heating and lingering atmospheric moisture. We could see a couple little afternoon showers, thunderstorms, that sort of thing kick off. Very sporadic, very isolated. Same story on Saturday by Sunday morning. A little area of low pressure is going to try to make its way in off of the coast, but this high pressure ridge is going to hold a lot of that at bay. So maybe a shot of moisture in the northwestern Montana, but our area we're going to stay dry for the most part through the weekend, minus a couple little, you know, scattered showers, thunderstorms, that sort of thing. Here's how it all translates over the next seven days for you. A little bit cooler today, a lot less in the way of wind. Still could be breezy at times as we head toward the weekend, but pushing the 80s as we head into Friday and Saturday. Good news there. As for the capital, sitting at 75 degrees today, a little bit breezy, and the best chance for afternoon showers and or thunderstorms are going to be Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, and then again on Tuesday of next week. Shannon. Jason, thanks. It's 618 now. Wrap up weather and moving forward and coming up on Montana this morning. It's a historic day in the new space race. We'll take you to the Kennedy Space Center ahead of a major launch today. That's coming up next. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Good morning, everybody. 623 on your clock right now. Well, later today, astronauts are set to blast off from the United States for the first time in nearly a decade. Elon Musk's SpaceX is at the controls with the Falcon 9 rocket set to launch. CBS's Skylar Henry is at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida covering this historic day. With just hours to go, a decade's worth of work will be put to the test turning a new chapter in America's storied space program. NASA and SpaceX are ready to launch. This is a unique moment where all of America can take a, a moment and look at our country do something stunning again. And that is launch American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. 
Longtime astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin will take Elon Musk's Crew Dragon spacecraft on a mission to the International Space Station. I'm a big believer in the commercialization of space. We need it to be successful. It's how we're going to get to the moon and on to Mars. It's the first time a private company is sending astronauts into orbit with the help of NASA and a multi-billion dollar investment from taxpayers. Almost everything is controlled by, by touch and screen. That's even how you fly it. There's no stick. You know, there's no like giant wheel or stick to, to fly. You, you, you fly by touching the touchscreen like you're playing a video game. Former NASA astronaut Garrett Reisman has guided SpaceX through the journey from ambitious idea to actual spacecraft on a launch pad. In a way, you guys are the torchbearers almost in terms of a, a new type of business model and potentially a space travel model. Yeah, so that's the really exciting thing about this. Now, the first and foremost, what's happening this week is a successful launch will we'll be NASA and the United States getting back into the business of sending humans up to the space station. A successful mission puts NASA on track to become less reliant on Russian spacecraft, which has been the case since the last American shuttle landed in 2011. Skyler Henry, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. President Trump is expected to attend that launch this afternoon. Of course, like always, weather is a big <laughs> factor for the launch today. If it isn't just right, mm -hmm. They'll uh, scrap it for today and try again on Saturday. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, obviously you're launching a rocket, so right. you got to be very mindful of those things. But it's amazing, just like the littlest shift in wind or a cloud here. Right, which is just scrap so funny because we're sending it into space. Like, that goes through a lot to get into another right. atmosphere. But right, right. So you, this wouldn't, you wouldn't think that a little right. shift in the wind would make that big of a difference, <laughs> no. but it certainly does. So yep. that would be a lot of pressure to be a forecaster for oh that, though. Oh, my gosh, no kidding. I mean, Ooh, I can't even... Then you really oh, would get geez. blamed if things were wrong. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. I, don't get, <laughs> well, I get blamed all the time. Anyways, roll the weather. At least Not, thank let you. the blaming begin. Yeah, Here great. Now, let the hate mail <laughs> commence. Thanks, Shannon. You're welcome. Just give everybody the idea, just what I need on a Wednesday Blame morning. him for anything you don't oh like about gosh. the weather. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get into that later. Anyways, rain uh, moving throughout south, south, south. See, now I'm all nervous. Oh, boy. You've made me all nervous. Mm. Tea time forecast looking at the 50s, warming up to the 60s as the day plays out. A little tiny bit cooler today than yesterday, uh, but less wind here this afternoon. However, in the capital, maybe a little bit breezier this afternoon at times. Slightly warmer in the mid 70s once it's all said and done. Mowing forecast, we're a green light and go pretty much all week here. Again, can't rule out a couple little stray showers maybe today, um, but very, very minimal. Most areas are going to stay dry. Shouldn't see a darn thing. Looking at 69 for your daytime high. Warming back to the 80s. Woo! All right. Super excited. Wow. Jazz that up for you a little bit. <laughs> 75 today in the capital and mid 80s by Friday. Ooh, that Look did out. get my attention. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's 627 here. Help you wake up. Thank you. Montana <laughs> this morning continues in just a moment. But first, here's a look at this morning's congrats to grads. Coming up this half hour on Montana this morning, waiting for help. We hear from one Great Falls man about his struggle to get unemployment payments during coronavirus. Plus, we have an update on some orphaned bear cubs here in central Montana and where they're headed next. And a historic day in the new space race. We'll take you to Kennedy Space Center ahead of a major launch today. Montana this morning starts now. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Good morning. We're so glad to have you with us. I'm Shannon Newth alongside Jason Laird here on this Wednesday, May 27th. Yeah, I can't believe it's Wednesday yeah. already. Beautiful day out there. So if you're new to Montana this morning, this this might surprise you. If you watch us quite frequently, you'll know that we get off on tangents get off pretty on tangents. easy. Yeah. So we were talking about a Montana gal mm -hmm. who was in uh, Let's Make a Deal. She's going to be or on gonna be mm -hmm. in Let's Make a Deal. And somehow we went down the, the, the rabbit, rabbit hole of yeah. talking about Jeopardy, which led to Alexa. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> anyways, our director Carter just told us that his girlfriend was at home watching the show and yeah. her Alexa 
<laughs> went off. Yeah, we were talking about Mission like, accomplished. wouldn't it be funny if as oh, we're gosh. talking about Alexa, someone has the show on and it's queuing the Alexa there. Our and ratings so, yeah. are falling as we people speak. People are just like, what yeah. is happening? Oh, this is nonsense. No, that's outstanding. Now I just got to figure, oh, I need to. We need to How play can some. I play this into my favor? I'll figure something out <laughs> anyway. So sorry if your Alexa <laughs> went off this morning, but it is rather it's the little things that keep you entertained, entertained at this hour yes. in the morning, right? Uh, very green. Check it out. Beautiful, beautiful sunrise on the U.S. Bank. I camp 39 degrees in Great Falls, more mild in Cut Bank at 44. As for today's high temperature, going to be hitting uh, 69 degrees. Nice day out there, partly cloudy. Can't rule out a little light stray shower in a couple areas. We'll talk more about that main weather opportunity. Bank ICAM in the capital, 48 degrees. Lincoln a little bit chilly at 35. And Clancy sitting at 44. Hour by hour forecast sitting at 75 degrees here for your daytime high and uh, warming up nicely today as well. Not nearly as much wind. So forecast headlines a little bit cooler today, less wind and a very warm and mild weekend. We'll tell you all about that uh, extended forecast coming up shortly, Shannon. All right, Jason, thanks. It's 631 now on this Wednesday morning. Montana has two new cases of coronavirus. That brings the total to 480. One of the cases is a woman inmate at the Yellowstone County Detention Center in Billings. The other new case is in Bighorn County, and the state has sustained its 17th COVID-related death. The victim is a woman in her 80s in Yellowstone County. It's that county's third death. In total, there are 23 active cases right now. Three people are hospitalized. 440 people, though, have recovered so far from coronavirus. Congress is shifting its focus for the next relief bill to small businesses. It's something that Democrats and Republicans seem to agree on. Legislators are hoping to help employers reopen shops and survive the rest of this outbreak. Measures that would give small employers more time to get help for payroll and other costs is expected to pass the House this week. Congress remains split on other topics, though, like how much money should be given to state and local governments for recovery efforts. Department of Labor leaders say they've issued over $300 million in unemployment payments since March, but not everyone is getting the benefits that they've earned right away. Great Falls City bus driver Mark Statham has been furloughed since March. He just collected his first unemployment check last week. A filing error led to months of worry and frustration for Statham, who finally enlisted the help of Senator John Tester. While his case is now settled, Statham worries other Montanans in dire situations aren't getting the benefits that they've earned. He says people aren't able to reach a human when calling the Department of Labor or unemployment. DLI spokesperson Lauren Lewis says in April, their department received more than 2 million calls. That's compared to just 13,000 in February. Still, Statham says there needs to be some improvements. You know, beef it up. Um, we're having an emergency here. You guys are working, your paychecks are coming in, but, but there's nothing I can do about going back to work except giving up my job and going and getting another one. And right now my only choice is to go back out over the road. And I just, I just won't do that. DLI says many Montanans are getting their benefits. In April, 78.7% of all Montanans who filed received their benefits within the month. We have more on this story on our website. Lewis and Clark Public Health will receive more than $200,000 through the Federal CARES Act to help cover its costs of responding to COVID-19. The state has allocated $5 million in emergency grants to public health organizations. The Lewis and Clark County Health Officer says her agency spent more than $108,000 on COVID-related expenses in March and April. She says 22 staff members have been working almost exclusively on the coronavirus with efforts like enforcing public health restrictions and doing contact tracing. County leaders say Lewis and Clark Public Health will play an important role going forward as they try to find safe ways to continue local services. It is very important that as we're maybe at this little bit of a lull, we should not uh, lull ourselves to sleep and not pay attention and realize that this COVID, uh, COVID pandemic is far from over uh, and that we need to make plans prospectively. This grant funding could also help cover some of the public health's lost revenue due to COVID-19. They add that they lost about $17,000 that would normally have that they normally would have made through immunization clinics and other services that they had to cancel.
State Attorney General Tim Fox asked the Montana Supreme Court to overturn a judge's ruling on the deadline for counting mailed absentee ballots next week. A state district judge in Billings ruled last Friday if a mailed primary election ballot is postmarked by Election Day, it must be counted. But Fox asked the Supreme Court to take control of the case and block the judge's order while deciding the issue. Fox is asking the high court to maintain the current rule, which says that mailed absentee ballots are counted only if they arrive at county election offices by election day. Montana is in the midst of its first statewide election with all mail in ballots. Voting in the primary election began on May 9th and it's continuing through next Tuesday, election day. The Supreme Court may accept the case and could also ask the state Democratic Party, which brought the lawsuit, to respond. If it does, the high court is expected to fast track a ruling before Election Day. The Supreme Court has not yet issued a response. The Cascade County Sheriff's Office recently finished installing a new switchboard system to their jail facility. MTS Matt Holzaffel took a tour of the jail and shows us what's new. Under construction since February, the new switchboard system at the Cascade County Detention Center is finally complete. Well, they're just basically far more reliable. They work all the time where our old ones weren't working properly. The old switchboards, in use since 1997, Sheriff Jesse Slaughter says it was time for a change. They have more safety features for the officers. There's identification pieces to this as well where they can identify who's in what cells. Um, there's there's so many features I, I can't even begin to describe to you that all the different ways that it's going to help better our facility and make it more efficient. All this as part of a plan to keep the building ready to handle any task thrown its way. A building like this is gets a lot of wear and tear on it and you have to have a robust capital improvement plan to make sure you're keeping up with day-to-day -day maintenance. The project cost $580,000 and involved multiple contracts acquired through city commission bids. A price tag that Sheriff Slaughter says was worth it. Absolutely, it's expensive. Um, there's there's nothing inside this facility that isn't. Uh, that's the reality of it. But we feel that this is uh, an important step to not only protect our staff, but also the inmates. In Great Falls, Matt Holzaffel, MTN News. This new system also allows detention facility workers to have more control over security measures like isolating cell doors and communicating with other officers. Well, like many things all across the United States, sports are beginning to see a resurgence. And with that comes sports betting. Sports Bet Montana opened kiosks all across the state shortly before the COVID-19 outbreak. Now sports are starting to return. Jennifer McKee, communications manager for the Montana Lottery, says the sport with the most number of bettors up to this point is mixed martial arts with over $30,000 wagered. Sports like Korean baseball and golf are also seeing action as well. well. We're learning more about the man who was attacked by a grizzly bear in Big Sky. According to Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, the man was mountain biking by himself on private property on a trail above Usul Falls when a bear attacked him after being surprised. FWP says they're not looking for the bear and they don't plan on euthanizing it at this point because the encounter was likely due to being surprised. The call was reported around 1 p.m., but the attack happened sometime before. The man suffered injuries to his face and back and was airlifted to Billings. As of Monday, the man, who was in his 60s, was in critical but stable condition. The Gallatin County Sheriff's Office is paying close attention to calls coming in on bear sightings in the area. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks says three orphaned bear cubs will be taken to an accredited facility in Arizona. Those cubs were last uh, were orphaned last month after their mother was injured in a surprise encounter with a hiker along the Rocky Mountain front. After OBUP had to euthanize the sow and the cubs were captured and taken to Montana Wild in Helena. While FWP and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service could search for a facility to care for them. Well, it is Wednesday morning. Your time now is 6.39, about 21 minutes away from the 7 o'clock hour. Coming up on Montana this morning, Big Sky Inspiration, turning this time of coronavirus into creativity. That story is next. And later in your weather forecast, we are tracking improving conditions as we head toward the weekend. The whole reason behind that, nice ridge of high pressure is going to build in. That's going to clear skies and allow temperatures to climb into the 80s as we head toward the weekend. The morning forecast is coming up. Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. 
Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on your Wednesday morning. It's May 27th. The time now 642 and we're looking live over Great Falls this morning on a beautiful, pretty mild start to the day. We're sitting at 39 degrees right now. Well, if COVID-19 didn't give you enough inspiration to enjoy the outdoors this summer, perhaps a trip to an art exhibit in Fairfield will. MTN's Isaiah Dunk has the story. At three years old, Bonnie Dale watched her mother painting pink roses on Valentine's for local teachers. She's been inspired to be an artist ever since. I found a box of crayons. We always had something like that around and I decided I was going to decorate the wall. That was my first experience at painting, <laughs> painting mother's wall. Dale grew up in a family with 17 children on a ranch near the Sun River. Her father was a game warden, instilling her with a love of animals. Dale added sculpting to her skill set in middle school and eventually embarked on an art career over four decades. Living on the ranch like that and being around mom and dad both, they loved animals. I grew up loving them. And now for the first time in years, a large amount of her work is on display at the Big Sky Pottery and Art Gallery in Fairfield. Gallery owner Andy Watson said it's been a joy to watch his gallery come to life with Dale's art. More often than not, she gave her pieces away. Most of what's on display is on loan from local owners, but some simply couldn't give up their pieces. When you have something of uh, Bonnie Dale, it's, it's, it bespeaks of the love of nature that only somebody who grew up and spent every day of her childhood, where, where your formative years are, could start breathing that in and it becomes a part of their system. But there's one piece on display near and dear to Dale that she could never part with. It's one of her mom's favorite spots on the Sun River. I love my mother. She was my best friend. And we sit there on the bank and visited. That was our last, just one on one visit together. And I painted that thinking of mom and put the roses where we sat. In Fairfield, Isaiah Dunk, MTN News. Dale's exhibit was scheduled to end on May 31st, but Watson said he plans on extending it until June 15th. Well, a Great Falls native will make her national TV debut this coming Monday. MTN's Tom Wiley tells us where you can watch. Shauna Applegate is a family practitioner at Alluvian Health in Great Falls, and at work, she's all business. But if you turn on the TV Monday morning, you might see a different side of the healthcare provider. To the green pea right here, is it Shauna? Come on, Shauna. Last year, Applegate and her grandma Cheryl took a trip to the West Coast, where part of the adventure was attending and being a contestant on the long-running game show, Let's Make a Deal. So we um, made our costumes on the way, like as we were driving and traveling, which was very interesting. We were two peas in a pod, you know, kind of true to life. The day, it was we were there from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and taping an hour and a half, so it was a long day. And Applegate can't disclose the results of the show, but she can tell you her time on camera is worth watching. Go! You know, you never think you're gonna get picked on one of these things, so I wasn't really completely paying attention when they were like, this is the way you run, this is what you do, and yeah, I, Probably did some things that were not called for, ran the wrong way, wig falling off, it was, it was a blast. Appearing on national TV was certainly a highlight, but it wasn't the purpose of the trip. So my grandma was going through um, cancer treatment for lung cancer and uh, she wanted to go to the Grand Canyon, so I decided let's make a big thing of this. So we flew to Arizona, drove from the, to the Grand Canyon, over to Hollywood went to a day of let's make a deal, and then we drove to Vegas and flew home. An adventure worth remembering, whether she wins or not. It's a new Audi A3! It was so much fun. Tom Wiley, MTN News. And you can watch her this coming Monday at 10 here on CBS. Well, NASA astronauts are getting ready for a historic space launch later today. After concerns about weather, the SpaceX Dragon capsule will go into orbit as planned. It'll be the first astronaut launch from American soil in nearly a decade and the first in an entirely new shuttle since 1981. Astronauts will be heading to the International Space Station for a test flight from Florida. If weather does 
uh, doesn't get in the way, or rather if it does get in the way today, that'll be rescheduled for Saturday. Well, up next to your weather forecast, uh, sunny skies and beautiful weather headed our way. Maybe a little isolated shower possible this afternoon. Currently, we're seeing a few light showers along the High Line 39 in Great Falls, 48 in the capital. Car wash forecast today looking good, except for the slight possibility of a stray afternoon shower throughout central Montana. We'll show you that here momentarily. All in forecast with all the rain, we're still trending right at medium, so not too bad. More on your detailed forecast is after the break. Thanks. Now, here's your storm tracker weather forecast with Jason Laird. Good morning. Thanks for spending your day with us. I'm Jason Laird. Well, uh, currently sitting a little bit cooler than what we were yesterday, uh, about eight degrees cooler than what we were 24 hours ago. And those slightly cooler temperatures are going to take us through the first half of the day here. For the most part, we're sitting at 39 degrees in Great Falls, 48 in the capital. A couple of light little showers trying to make their way throughout north central Montana, very few of which are actually making it to the ground. This afternoon, we will still see slightly cloudy conditions out there, a little bit of sun peeking through at times. Isolated showers not out of the question, but very minimal impacts. Most areas should see dry. In other words, it's just going to be a shower enough to kind of, you know, dirty up the car. If you just ran it through the car wash, you pull out a couple little spots, that sort of thing. Clearing up as the day plays out, though, so slightly cooler today with daytime highs at about 69 in Great Falls, 75 in the capital and looking at the high 60s and low 70s throughout the eastern plains. Overnight lows a little bit chillier in north central Montana, looking at the low 40s, 46 degrees in the capital. Same story throughout eastern Montana, Mile City at about 49 degrees. Tomorrow, though, we're going to really start to bump those temperatures up right on track with room temperature here in Great Falls, about 76 degrees in the capital, and we'll continue to warm things as we head toward Friday. Here's the driving force behind the warmer weather. Big high pressure ridge is going to start to build Thursday into Friday. Now, even though this high pressure ridge is building in, that warmer air will possibly kick off a few little afternoon showers and thunderstorms throughout central Montana. Montana. You'll notice here Friday afternoon, couple little speckles of rain there possible. Very sporadic, very isolated. The big talking point is very, very warm weather setting in. Temperatures in the 80s this weekend. Same story Saturday afternoon, just a slight possibility of a few little showers. Weather disturbance tr does try to make its way into the state, but for the most part, this high pressure ridge is going to hold it at bay, and uh, it's just going to kind of skirt right on past us heading up to the north. We may see this ridge break down slightly as we head toward Tuesday of this next week. We'll have to kind of play it by ear, see how it plays out. Next seven days look like this 69 today, then right on track with room temperature tomorrow. A lot less wind in the forecast, still kind of breezy at times, though. Could see a few little uh, showers and or thunderstorms Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon, and then a little bit better chance of storms returning Tuesday of this next week. Next seven days in the capital, sitting at 75 degrees today, a little bit breezy at times. Back up to the 80s, though, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and a couple of storms possible by Tuesday, Shannon. Thanks, Jason. Time now is 653 here on your Wednesday. Wall Street rallied to start off the holiday shortened week. The Dow soared 529 points. The Nasdaq gained 15. S&P 500 added 36. Brokers were back on the trading floor for the first time in two months. They had to go through temperature checks, wear masks once inside, and maintain social distancing. Reopening the country's economy has helped to push stocks to the highest levels since the coronavirus took hold. Coming up, we're in Minnesota where protests turned violent following the death of an unarmed black man after an encounter with police. Plus, we talk with SpaceX CEO Elon Musk about today's historic launch. Coming up on CBS This Morning. It's 656. Let's get you out the door now with today's top stories on this Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. Montana has two new cases of coronavirus that brings the total to 480. One of the cases is a woman inmate at the Yellowstone County Detention Center in Billings. The other new case is in Bighorn County and the state now has its 17th COVID related death. That woman in her is in her 80s in Yellowstone County. It's that county's third death. There are 23 active cases in Montana. Three people are hospitalized. 440 people have recovered. 
Congress is now shifting its focus for the next relief bill to small businesses. Legislators are hoping to help employers reopen shops and survive the rest of this outbreak. Measures that would give small employers more time to get help for payroll and other costs is expected to pass the House this week. Congress remains split on other topics like how much money should be given to state and local governments for recovery efforts. Sports Bet Montana opened kiosks all across the state shortly before coronavirus started, and now sports are starting to return. Jennifer McKee with the Montana Lottery says the sport with the most number of bettors right now, mixed martial arts with over $30,000 wagered. Also, sports like Korean bas uh, baseball and golf are seeing action as well. Here at home, the Great Falls Transit District will open the bus doors on June 1st. The agency will require all passengers to wear a mask when using the bus. They'll also be doing regular deep cleaning of the buses. They're asking passengers to stay home if they don't feel well. The Cascade County Sheriff's Office recently finished installing a new switchboard system in their jail. The new system should be more reliable and will offer a variety of new features designed to keep inmates and employees safe. The project cost $580,000 and involved multiple contracts acquired through City Commission bids. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks says three orphaned bear cubs will be taken to an accredited facility in Arizona. Their mother was injured in a surprise encounter with a hiker along the Rocky Mountain front. FWP had to euthanize the sow. The cubs were captured and taken to Montana Wild. FWP and Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks could search for a new facility to care for them. And on the weather scene, a couple of clouds today are going to hold temperatures back slightly, but still pretty mild out there. Currently sitting at 44 degrees on the U.S. Bank ICAM here in Great Falls. As for the Capital Opportunity Bank ICAM sitting at 50 degrees right now. A little bit breezy at times, but not nearly as much wind as what we saw yesterday. Hour by hour forecast, partly sunny skies. Pretty much all day today. A little bit better chance of some breezy conditions this afternoon in the capital with temperatures back into the 70s. Pollen forecast pretty darn minimal for us. We're staying right at medium. We'll keep an eye here as we head toward the weekend. Those conditions dry up and warm up. That pollen outlook could be a little bit higher, so we'll keep you up to date on a day to day basis. Gardening forecast, weather conditions looking fantastic. Can't rule out a few little light showers today, but I mean, for the most part, very minimal, if anything. Uh, probably not even going to make it here into central Montana. Better chance, though, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the next couple of days. 69 today, warming up to the 80s, though, as Friday rolls around. So get out and enjoy that. I'm excited. Yeah. Warming up, sunshine for the weekend. All right. Well, our news doesn't stop here. Get continuous coverage throughout the day on our social media and mobile apps. That's right. We're back in about 25 minutes or so with the day's latest headlines and an updated forecast. Stick around. CBS This Morning is next. Have a great Wednesday, everyone. The Montana Telecommunications Access Program, or MTAP, is working to ensure that Montanans who are deaf, hard of hearing, or have speech or mobility impairments are able to use traditional telecommunications equipment and services. MTAP equipment specialists will deliver phones right to your home. They'll set the equipment up and even show you how to use it, all at no cost to Montanans who qualify. For more information on this program, call the number on your screen. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shannon Newth. It is Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. Montana has two new cases of coronavirus. That brings our statewide total to 480. One of those new cases is a woman inmate at the Yellowstone County Detention Center in Billings. The other new case is in Bighorn County. The state also has its 17th COVID-related death. That victim is a woman in her 80s in Yellowstone County. There are 23 active cases in the state. Three people are hospitalized. Overall, though, 440 people have recovered. Department of Labor leaders say they've issued over $300 million in unemployment payments since March, but not everyone is getting the benefits they've earned right away. Great Falls City bus driver Mark Stratum was furloughed back in March. He just collected his first unemployment check last week. A filing error led to months of worry and frustration for Stratum, who finally enlisted the help of Senator John Tester. While his case is now settled, Stratum worries other Montanans in dire situations aren't getting the benefits they've earned. He says people aren't able to reach a human when calling the Department of Labor or unemployment. DLI spokesperson Lauren Lewis says in April, their department received more than 2 million calls. 
That's compared to just 13,000 in February. Still, Statham says there needs to be improvements. You know, beef it up. Um, we're having an emergency here. You guys are working, your paychecks are coming in, but, but there's nothing I can do about going back to work except giving up my job and going and getting another one. And right now my only choice is to go back out over the road. And I just, I just won't do that. DLI says many Montanans are getting their benefits in April. 78.7% .7 of all Montanans who filed did receive their benefits within the month. We have more details about this on our website. Public transportation is about to hit the road in the Electric City. The Great Falls T Transit District will open the bus doors on June 1st. The agency will require all passengers to wear a mask when using the bus. They'll also be doing regular deep cleaning of the buses, and they're asking passengers to stay home if they don't feel well. It's time now to get a check of our forecast on this Wednesday. Here's Jason. Good morning, everybody. Slightly cooler today compared to yesterday in north central Montana. Not much change, though, for the capital at 75 for your daytime high, 69 in Great Falls. And looking at the 60s and 70s here for daytime highs in the eastern plains. A couple of clouds are going to kind of take us through the day today. That's helping to hold back those temperatures. A scattered shower or two, not out of the question this afternoon into the early evening. And then clearing skies overnight. 43 in Great Falls, 46 in the capital. Looking at mid 40s there in northeastern Montana. By tomorrow, we're going to start to inch those temperatures up a couple of notches right on track with room temperature 72 in Great Falls, 76 in the capital, a couple of 80s there west of the divide and looking at the low 70s in northeastern Montana. The reason behind the warm up nice high pressure ridge is going to build across the state. That's going to take temperatures to the next level. Friday afternoon again can't rule out a couple little stray showers and or a boom of thunder there periodically, but overall very, very nice warm weather as we head through the weekend temperatures in the 80s and we might see a couple of mountain showers there in northwestern Montana as a weak little weather disturbance tries to move through the area, but overall pretty minimal impacts there. Next seven days look like this 69 today, a little bit cooler, but warming up nicely as we head toward the weekend back to the 80s by Friday and Saturday. Again, afternoon showers, thunderstorms there not out of the question. A little bit breezy at times in the capital at 75 degrees with the 80s to follow by Friday and Saturday.